Today on our 2014 Ford Escape, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver, which is a Class 3 hitch, part number C13186. Here's what the hitch is going to look like once it's installed on the vehicle. As you can see, there isn't a whole lot visible other than this receiver tube because that cross tube is nicely tucked up behind the fascia here. If you're looking for something that is going to be primarily used for bike racks and cargo carriers, but occasionally to pull a trailer, this is going to be a really good bet. Here we've got the standard half inch hitch pin hole that's going to be used to secure anything into our receiver tube, along with our rounded steel safety chain loops that are just welded to the underside here. This hitch features a 350 pound tongue weight rating, along with a 3500 pound gross trailer weight rating, and those weights are up to 500 pound tongue weight rating and 5,000 pound trailer weight rating with a weight distribution system. But you will want to be sure to refer to your car's owner's manual to see what type of weight it's rated for. Next, I'm going to give you some measurements to help assist in selection of hitch mounted accessories such as ball mounts, bike racks, and cargo carriers. The distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost part of the rear bumper is four and a half inches, and the distance from the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening to the ground is 14 inches. Now, let's go ahead and install it. First thing we'll need to do to begin our install is take a 13 millimeter and remove the bolts that are right here on the exhaust hanger. And just let it hang. And then there's two more on the other side and we'll remove those the same way. Now we can take a 10 millimeter and loosen this little nut right here, which is gonna allow our heat shield to come down. I'm going to trim this from here. I'm going to trim it about an inch past this hole. Now I want to make sure that I have clearance to my larger access hole here, along with the smaller hole that's just behind it on the vehicle. So now that I've got it trimmed, I can put this little nut back on to resecure the end of our heat shield here. We'll move to the passenger side and trim that heat shield so that we have access to those same holes. So here's our access hole that we're going to be sending our carriage bolts through, but the problem is the head doesn't quite fit all the way through. So I'm going to take a carbide bit and just grind that down a little bit. You can also use a file if you have one. Now it'll fit through there. Keep in mind that at this point, what we'll be doing on one side, we'll be repeating that on the other side. The first one I'll be fishing it through is going to be this hole right here on the outside of the frame rail. So I'll take the coiled portion of it, feed it through, and push it so that then it'll come down through the access hole. Then I can grab one of my 7 16 carriage bolts and the big square hold spacers. I'll thread that up into the coils there. Then I'll send that spacer up a little bit so I can send it through first. And then I'll put the carriage bolt through. And then I'm gonna leave that just back inside there so that it doesn't interfere when we're trying to put that hitch up into place. Next I'll go through this hole that's more towards the rear of the vehicle. I'll install another carriage bolt and spacer. And when putting these two in on both sides, something you'll want to be aware of is that there's these weld nuts right up here where our exhaust brackets were bolted. So you'll want to make sure that those spacers that are up in there don't get caught on those and leave the bolt off at an angle. Then finally, I'll be putting the one that goes in our access hole there. So I'll feed the carriage bolt through, thread it into my fish wire. Then on this one, I'll feed the carriage bolt up first. Let it go off to the side there. Then I can feed the spacer in. and then pull it back through into position. All right, now you want to grab a second set of hands so that you can feed it up into place. And you want to feed it over the driver's side first. 
in order to get it past the exhaust and not risk scraping up the underside of the bumper there. And we've got these four holes here. We're going to be using the second and fourth one coming from the front of the vehicle. So I'll feed this fish wire down through and then be able to push it up into place. Make sure to feed through the one on the side as well. You can take one of your flange nuts and get it started onto one of the carriage bolts to help hold it in place. And then we'll be able to pull our bolt through here on the side of the frame. Then you can remove the fish wire from that. Install a flange nut there. Then we can go through and install the rest of our nut. Now we'll be able to take an 11 16 inch socket and begin to tighten these up once we've got them all started. But one thing you want to be sure to do is make sure that with these two other holes that those weld nuts that are up in the frame for the exhaust hanger are lined up. So you may have to pull the hitch towards the rear of the vehicle a little bit. You can tighten them down. We can grab a torque wrench and torque them to the specification in the instruction manual. And then we'll repeat that on all six bolts. Then we can take our new eight millimeter bolts with flat washers in order to reinstall our exhaust. Once we've got both sides loosely installed, we can take a 13 millimeter and tighten those up. Then we'll torque these to the specification and the instructions as well. And that's going to complete our look at the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver, which is class 3, part number C13186 on our 2014 Ford Escape.